So hi to everybody. I'm Massimo Nardi, and I'm one of the prevention and testing workers at Positive East. So uh, today I wanted to uh, talk to, uh, with you guys about like uh, HIV and STI testing in, in these times. So basically before uh, COVID happened, Positive East was present all over uh, East London uh, in places like libraries, civic centers, uh, bars, um, wherever they wanted us to go, we would set up a clinic to, uh, to do rapid HIV testing and STI screening, uh, basically. So we, were, uh, we went to, um, for example, in Havering, we were at a YMCA every quarter, um, and we were at the um, at the library as well every quarter in Barking and Dagenham we were at Barking and Dagenham libraries uh, and we were uh, going around the homeless shelters there as well because our service is like uh, our primary goal is to reach out to the most vulnerable population so we have uh, the LGBT community, of course, and Black and African communities at the foremost of our work, and uh, migration communi mi migrant communities, uh, homeless, and all this kind of um, vulnerable uh, population. So it, that's at the core of our work. So we were going to all these different kind of places in Redbridge, we were in a number of places as well. We were working with WDP, the substance misuse uh, organization in Redbridge. We were working also with sex workers uh, to try to uh, get them tested. And we had a very uh, like extensive program that went all up in, into the air when uh, COVID struck because, of course, face-to-face uh, -face work was not possible anymore uh, for uh, safety reasons. So we had to reinvent our, our uh, work, basically. So we started with a sexual health advice line and uh, people calling increasingly, uh, increasingly uh, made evident that there was a need for help with testing because as we know, uh, the NHS is a formidable force and we learned it through this year, uh, but they also had to face a pandemic. So uh, the sexual health, uh, side of the uh, of the public health uh, was relegated to like um, self testing mostly if if people doesn't have any symptoms uh, they are asked to uh, to do a self test which is of course uh, uh, understandable and uh, i mean it's for safety reasons so that's uh, that's the main scope, uh, trying not to get people into uh, hospitals and clinics if, it, if it's not necessary. And uh, But I'll, we noticed that a lot of our clients had uh, found this to be a barrier, self-testing. Some of them because of a language barrier, because SHL doesn't provide uh, lang um, language language interpreting, uh, so they came to us asking, how can I uh, do a test if I don't speak English very well? Other clients uh, were coming to us because they, they were scared to do a, a self-testing kit for the first time, and they didn't know exactly what to do and how to uh, do the test on themselves. And if they were doing things right, they were scared that uh, their samples would be uh, voided because they might do something wrong that they weren't aware of. So they wanted to be, uh, to 
we noticed that there was a need for a service that complemented the self-testing provided by the NHS with uh, like um, a support, kind of support assistance to uh, to help people perform their self-test. So we came up with this. Uh, I think it's fairly new because from what we know before us uh, here in the UK wasn't tried before. So we start basically what we do now, we send out uh, kits that are analogous to the to the NHS, to the SHL one, and I will show you uh, those, uh, how it works. And uh, we were booking, we are booking people in for uh, a video consultation with us, where we explain to them step by step how the test works and uh, what they have to do to take their samples correctly and uh, support them when they, some of them are scared like that the lancet uh, is painful or things like that. So we kind of reassure them, look, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's like doing uh, a diabetes screening. It's not really harmful. So people need this kind of reassurement we found. And um, we also, um, since we provide uh, the difference between our screening and the SHL one, the SHL one is all samples that need to be sent back to the lab and then the lab contacts the client, uh, giving them um, the results with our kit. Uh, the HIV test is a rapid HIV test one. So the result is straight away uh, during the video se session while the STI kit is, uh, works in the same way uh, as the SHL one. Uh, so we, uh, we need also to help uh, clients uh, to manage their, uh, their results uh, because, of course, we, ref we, ref we refer uh, uh, clients who are um, reactive, so so-called positive to clinics. So we have like referral pathways with the main clinics in, uh, in East London. So we have uh, contacts with Bart's Health, with um, Barking Hospital uh, uh, Outpatients East and uh, Clifton Center at Homerton Hospital. So we can refer them immediately into care uh, with uh, with the the clinics they uh, they belong to, and we can also signpost them and refer them to any other service. I have, for example, for, uh, due to COVID, a lot of uh, clients uh, experience anxiety, and um, uh, they are looking like for uh, mental health support. So we. Uh, we refer them to the talking therapies available in the Eastern boroughs, for example. A lot in our community, there is a lot of, um, well, a lot. There is a problem that is chem sex, and uh, it's um, mainly a problem experienced by uh, gay men. And uh, it's the use of drugs for the purpose of sex. So it's uh, usually injecting drugs or other drugs that can be assumed orally. And they are quite dangerous. And um, chem sex, it's a phenomenon that is linked to uh, loneliness in, in our community. And uh, COVID had, has enhanced uh, loneliness, as we all know, in, in the broader population and especially in, in the LGBT community and in, uh, with gay men, it's, it hit particularly hard. So um, a lot of, we, uh, we experience uh, an insurgence of cases 
uh, of camp sex in our uh, in East London because of this uh, loneliness and isolation that we are experiencing in these times. So it's uh, a holistic service basically that uh, tries to cover the need of. Uh, uh, of our LGBT community, in fact, of uh, sexual health. So um, we uh, we also have, for a period of time during during summer when there was no lockdown, we were uh, also doing a little uh, work of face to face outreach, working with partners as uh, UCLH and. Uh, um Homerton Hospital uh, that were organizing like visits to homeless shelters where they will propose like general testing for all bloodborne viruses. So they will test people for uh, TB uh, and uh, COVID as well. And uh, we will support them with the sexual health uh, part of the of the testing. Uh, it was quite uh, a good service, but unfortunately with lockdown in November, it, it came to an end from our part. I believe that still US, US, UCLH and Homerton Hospital are keeping on uh, going to homeless shelters to offer uh, services, but uh, as an organization, we weren't able to, to join them anymore. So uh, we are very eager to reprise uh, the the face to face work because we still think that even with our provision and complementing the NHS service with our provision, there is still uh, um, people who falls out of this grid of like offer and uh, for a lot of reasons mainly because a lot of people doesn't have access to the internet or they are not tech savvy, as you can say, or um, they, ex they have difficulties in, uh, in using uh, the remote services and uh, self-testing for any reason. So uh, we tried we are trying to propose also a new model this week. I didn't mention it. This week is National uh, HIV Testing Week. So for this week, we are like piloting a new way of using our remote service. And uh, we have partnered with different um, homeless shelters around East London. So we are working with Sam Mungos and uh, in Hackney, um we have been uh, we are uh, going to YMCA in uh, in uh, Romford um and we have also SHP hostels in Redbridge i believe and what we are trying to do is um uh walk in remote testing clinic so basically, it will wo it works in this way. We send a certain number of testing kit to the homeless shelter, and then uh, the uh, host uh, hostel workers uh, basically advertise the service to their uh, service users, and then they get people to. Uh, book an appointment uh, for the day that we are going to do the walk-in and then on the day of the walk-in we connect on video with the ho with the hostel and the workers basically uh, function as reception and they uh, send in uh, clients one by one uh, we already did it at the Riverside Complex in Tower Hamlets, which is a female uh, homeless shelter. Um, we, uh, I think today or tomorrow, it's going to be in St. Mungo's. So it's 
it's working quite well. Uh, the numbers that we are having with remote testing are quite lower uh, compared to the to the like face to face because there are like objective difficulties and the times get longer because we have to send out the test and then we have to wait that the test the test kit arrives and then do the video consultation and then uh, for the HIV they get the results th uh, there and then but the STIs they have to send back the kit and then uh, the lab has to receive the kit and uh, do all the tests so it takes uh, it takes longer client to client, so we are able to see around uh, 10 to 20 clients each week, while normally in a very busy face-to-face uh, uh, -face clinic, we can, uh, we can see up to 20 clients in a, in a day, so there is <laughs> quite a difference of scope, but I think uh, it's still helping uh, people with their sexual health and it's um, a lot of people is uh, able to use SHL on their own without any assistance so uh, we are just adding something to to those numbers and we are trying to reach out to people who is not otherwise able to use the the, the self-testing and yeah, I have also a kit here to show how it works. Uh, probably uh, those in the LGBT community who use SHL are quite familiar with it. This is a little bit different, but uh, I will show you. So basically what we have is something like this. Sorry, but my kit is <laughs> hyper used with all the clients that I uh, support. So this is the HIV testing test that we use. It's a uh, third generation uh, HIV test. So basically it has um, uh, a three months window period, which means that it's able to detect HIV antibodies in someone's blood 99.97% uh, of the time if the uh, infection started up to three months before the test. So basically uh, with uh, antibody tests uh, it works like this. So uh, the test uh, detects the antibodies so uh, um, the antibodies form when uh, the individual gets in contact with HIV and they take up to three months to form in a certain amount that is detectable from the test. So uh, we usually uh, advise people, of course, we have um, an, a pre-assessment before the test to see if the test is um appropriate to the client and um, which kind of test they prefer because sometimes they just need the HIV test because uh, they had their STI screening separately uh, or simply um, it's not um, sometimes it's not the right service for them so um, people who experience extreme level of anxiety, we prefer always to refer them to, uh, to the sexual health services at the NHS, which are more like uh, able to, to provide to, uh, to those like to, uh, more complex cases. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the window period is three months. It's a very easy test. It, I will show you there is this, this is the test itself, and then you have just a lancet. So the lancet is used to prick one of the fingers, and then with the, with the uh, test kit itself, we just take one, literally one drop of blood, it's just enough to fill in this little tip of the 
of the kit and then on on the back there is this little pot with the reagent liquid we stub literally the pot with the with the kit and we press it and it starts going up it works similarly to a pregnancy test basically so we wait up to five minutes and then we have uh, the result will be one line if it's negative and two lines if it's positive, exactly as the pregnancy test. It's very simple. It's very easy to use. And uh, as I said, uh, the added value to our uh, consultation is that uh, if the client is positive, we are able to refer them immediately for uh, for care to the to the NHS trust in their area. So that's the HIV, very simple. And the STI screening is very similar to the, to the NHS one. And it's basically, we have a version for uh, uh, men that have sex with men and we use it for the, LGBT community in as a whole because it covers uh, trans men and non-binary individuals that have uh, um, sex with somebody who has a penis, basically. So uh, we take like a little a sample of blood. It and the problem sometimes with the clients is that they find it daunting to fill in a pot like this with their own blood because they are like, oh my God, <laughs> how do I do this? <laughs> so a lot of the work that we have to do is to reassure them. We, we say, look, in the pot, there is a lot of this uh, anticoagulant gel on the bottom and we have to fill it up to the second yellow line. So basically, it's an average of 16 drops. It's not like uh, <laughs> we are trying to bleed people to death or something. <laughs> so uh, it's very easy. I, I notice in my experience with remote testing, a lot of people need the reassurance that uh, everything is going to be fine, that it's not going to be... Uh, excessively difficult or anything. I usually explain before everything we are going to do because knowing what is going to happen uh, lowers a lot the, the levels of anxiety about, about testing. When I explain, I, I notice uh, the clients that usually relax a lot during the explanation because uh, they are understanding what they are going. It's going to happen, so they are like, "Oh, well, it's not as uh, daunting as I was expecting." So that's the main thing of the STI kit is the uh, blood test, which is uh, the first thing usually do. I usually uh, use the same finger prick for the HIV test. They take one drop, and they go on with the HIV test, and then they. Uh, they take the rest of the some of the blood sample from the same finger prick, and it usually works. I rarely ask people to uh, do a second uh, finger prick. And then on the same uh, test for chlamydia, oh, I forgot. This blood sample is uh, collected uh, uh, to be uh, analyzed for syphilis, hepatitis B, and C. And then we have two swabs and a urine sample that are analyzed for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Why three samples? Because of course we know that we need one for uh, the one for the throat for oral sex, uh, one for the uh, one is anal for anal sex, and then we have the urine sample uh, for uh, frontal sex in any way. And uh, if um, some clients who have a vagina prefer uh, a, a third swab for uh, a, a 
third vaginal swab as well, and we can easily uh, provide it. it the, the kit is very flexible, so we can swap and change uh, the, the samples as needed by the client. The process is very easy, and it's all shown in this very practical leaflets. It's shown uh, step by step for the blood here as well, and for the swabs as well. It's very uh, descriptive, I think, but we usually go through uh, those leaflets with the clients so that we, are, we make sure that they understand. But the explanation is very visual, so it's very simple and easy to use. And then differently from the SHL, there is a, um, a form that they have to fill, to fill in. And of course, we assist them uh, fill, uh, to fill in the forms as well. And there are also little labels that need to be filled. I mean, it's a little bit uh, more work uh, than with the SHL one. But we are on video to uh, to guide them through all these bits. So usually mm, they are very good to do it. And then after all all the samples are taken, everything is put in a pre-franked envelope with the box and sent back to the to the labs at Bart's Health. So this is uh, how our test works and. Mm. The uptake is is quite good. Is and people is like finding it useful. We had uh, we ju we just did a research uh, about uh, the our testing uptake in Redbridge, and we are just about to publish the the results. And uh, we found with this research quite a lot of appreci appreciation of the of the testing kit and a further um, positive result that we had from remote testing from our remote testing service is that the demographics of the people we are get, uh, who are getting tested with this uh, remote service is completely different from the face-to-face -face work that we did before because we get a lot of younger people. Um, we get uh, more uh, people from uh, different uh, ethnicities like Black, Black African, uh, South Asian, who sometimes don't feel comfortable to go into a clinic for a variety of reasons that they can have. And so that's uh, that brought us to uh, to decide that we will most probably keep the remote testing option also after uh, everything will be reopened and we will be allowed to do face-to-face uh, -face, uh, testing because uh, Many people find it more comfortable when they don't have to do these kind of uh, tests face to face. So uh, we think it's it's a valuable uh, service that needs to be to stay on uh, on our <laughs> in our provision for the for the future as well. Mm -hmm.